because when we do a Hangout on Air and we get the automatic recording from Google, it does not show all the things that we're going to be learning about today because it only shows what people see in the view screen. And so for the viewer experience, they don't see all the icons coming in and out and popping in and out. They just see the video feed. But we want to learn about all the icons and all the apps available. So I'm recording it with a third party software that records my desktop. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. So if you're okay with being recorded and with that being made public, give me a nod. Yes. So I have that officially on the video. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> Hello, I'm Melani McDonald. I'm a brand identity and social outreach consultant. I help small businesses learn how to use social media effectively and to build a brand identity that works for them so their small businesses can bloom. Today we're taking a tour of Google Hangouts and we're taking that tour from the inside. So we are going to learn all the tools that a Hangout host has available to them to create a great Hangout experience that will provide a video marketing tool that they can have for a long time. Because when you record a Hangout by doing a Hangout on Air, you have now content for your video marketing library that you can use to market your goods and services and your business. And we'll discuss some ideas for that along the way as well. So the first thing I'm going to have you do is to move your mouse around on your screen. When you move your mouse around on your Hangout screen, that's when you see your icons pop up. With all of these icons and apps, it's toggle it on, toggle it off. So you click it once to turn it on and click it again to turn it off. The ones we're looking at first are in the top row. And in that top row, you see a little microphone with a slash through it. That's your mute microphone. And when I click it, you won't hear me talking anymore. I'm muted, you can't hear me. So now I've unmuted it and you can hear me again. Now you saw my lips moving but you couldn't hear what I was saying and I believe you would have seen a little muted microphone symbol also in the in the thumbnails at the bottom. Now the same thing happens with the camera. I can click it once to turn the camera off and when you turn the camera off your profile icon shows by default instead which is really nice and this way you can still see I'm still that I'm talking because they put these great big circles moving in and out on the screen. The other way you can see that I'm talking is if you look in your thumbnails at the bottom you see some green dots going up and down as I'm speaking and that shows that I am the one who's talking. I will go ahead and turn my camera back on and What's really helpful about those dots is that if you have a full Hangout, if you have 10 people in it, and you're getting some random noise, people are shuffling papers or typing or, or somebody's little kids are running around in the background, then it's easy for the host to tell where the sound is coming from because anywhere that's picking up sound will have those green dots. And I can look in my film strip, what we call the gallery of people on the bottom there, or I call it the peanut gallery, and I can look and see who's got the, the green dots going and whose sound is interrupting us. And I can go in and mute that person. And the way you do that is when you mouse over the person's little picture in the film strip, there's a little down arrow tick in the right corner and when you click on that it allows you to mute them and it also gives you the profile if you click on the profile it'll open a google page with their profile in it so if you're in a hangout and somebody's saying something really interesting and you think oh i want to follow this person i want to add them to my circles you click on that profile it goes to the profile page and then you can add them to your circles easily or find out more about them Okay, so moving right along, on the top at the left side is a little head with a plus sign, and that's how you invite people. And you guys can go ahead and follow along with me. Go ahead and click on Invite People, and it opens up a box. 
Now in that box, there is a link to share. That is the link to this Hangout. So as an example, that is the link that I put into the event listing that said, hey, anybody who wants to come in, click this link. And that just makes it easy for them to find their way into the Hangout. Underneath the link is send an invite. And that's where I would add somebody's name. So if I'm typing in Barbara Larsh, you see that the profile icons pop up for, for that person. And then I would click on it and she would be added to the invite list. Now you can also invite by adding a whole circle. So that comes in handy if you're in a work group, for example, and you have eight people in your work group, instead of having to type in all eight names, you can create a circle and put those eight people in that, call it your work group circle, and then you can type in the name of your circle and click on it when it shows up and it'll add the whole circle. And what that means is the invite will go out to everybody in that circle. Now notice underneath there's also add telephone. You can add a telephone number here. You click on that add telephone link and it gives you a field where you can enter a phone number. You enter the phone number, you press call, and that brings somebody into the Hangout by phone. They're just getting a phone call. What we'll see in the Hangout is another little icon in the thumbnails at the bottom, but instead of having a picture of the person, it'll show partial phone number. Well, the next icon over to that is adjust bandwidth usage. Adjust bandwidth means that you can actually slide the slider down and you can limit the amount of bandwidth it's using. And as you can see, my picture is fuzzy now because I went and adjusted that slider and put it on very low. Now, if I take it all the way to the end, it actually turns my camera off. But this is really great if you have not fast uh, internet speed, but you still want to participate, you still want to ask questions, be part of the conversation, you can still join a Hangout, limit the bandwidth, and get a little bit of a sense of that you're there and you're smiling, yet still participate. This is also great because, as you know, these are global times. The internet goes beyond borders, but there's a lot of places out there that still don't have high-speed internet connection. And this way, people from those areas can still participate just by putting it on lower bandwidth. The next icon over is the gear symbol, and that is settings. And this little gear symbol is starting to be used more and more often, kind of universally, as settings. So if you go to your Google Plus page and you're looking for settings, you'll see a gear icon. I think Twitter uses it too. Now go ahead and click on that along with me so that you see what it looks like when we open the settings. And this is where you can check if you're using the right microphone and speakers. So in most cases, it's just using the default built-in stuff and you don't have to mess with your settings. But a lot of people like to use the headsets. And if that's the case, and they plug in their USB headset and microphone, they may have to go into the settings click on microphone and choose plug-in USB microphone and for the speakers the same thing because if they don't want the sound coming out of their computer they could choose plug-in USB headset or whatever it is that they're using. So next to that is a red handset. You do not want to press that button. That's how you exit the call. Farther to the right you see something that says enhanced. This is kind of nifty and this gives you some different choices for what your video looks like. Focus is kind of nice because it keeps the center area in focus but blurs out the background a little bit and if you don't have a nice pretty purple curtain background and it's a little bit messy sometimes that helps because you want the attention to be on the speaker. If you're in a dark room, brighten can help brighten things up a little. Spotlight makes it very clear in the middle and fuzzy around the edges. It's a little too clear in the middle. I don't like when I can see my pores. Warm gives you almost sort of a sepia tone. 
Smooth is very nice and very popular. It kind of just smooths everything out so we always look good. Black and white and original. I just like to leave it on enhanced. It kind of knows what to do. It uses a little bit of smoothing and a little bit of spotlight and tries to make everybody look their best. Now on the left hand side we have a series of icons and we'll get to those. The first one on the top is the chat box. Go ahead and click on that and then I want you to type hello to me in the chat box and then press return at the end or enter on your keyboard. There we go. Awesome. So that comes in very handy. If you're doing a hangout for on air, for example, and you're interviewing someone, then that person is speaking. You don't want the other people necessarily interrupting them as they're speaking. And this is a way for the other participants in the hangout to have side conversations or to provide more information. So for example, if your speaker answers a question, and then somebody has another question but didn't get a chance to ask it, they can type it in the chat box and oftentimes your other participants are watching the chat box and they'll answer the question. So it's a great opportunity to provide more information. You can also put links in that chat box and they will be live links. So that link I just put in there is something that you can click and it will take you to that web page. So it's a very handy tool. Okay, the next one down is called Screen Share. And this is very handy for when you are doing presentations. This allows you to share what you are looking at on your desktop. So go ahead and click that Screen Share and it's going to show you all the windows that are open on your computer and you can choose one. Don't choose the Hangouts one because it makes this really weird telescope effect. But if it says desktop or entire background, then that's your whole desktop and everything that I have open you would be able to see. So I would have to be very, very sure that I'm okay with you seeing whatever's on my desktop. The other choice right now for me, because I have Google Chrome open with some web pages open in the background, is that Chrome. So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to start my screen share. And what you should be seeing on your screen now is what I'm looking at, which is my web page that I just gave you a link to in the chat box. So I can do a presentation. And while I'm sharing my screen, I will take advantage of the opportunity to talk a little bit about Hangouts and events and promoting your Hangout. Creating a Hangout event is a great way to promote your Hangout. When you create an event, you're creating a page for your event. And if there's an associated Hangout, that video feed can be right in the page as it is here. So this was the event page I created for the Windermere Real Estate presentation. And when I created this page, it's got a URL up here. So I was able to take this link and send it out in an email to the people that I invited and say, here's the event page link. Here's where you're going to go to if you want to come join in this Hangout. And I have to invite them because this is a private event. But here you see the details. That's where I can put the instructions. And here's what we're going to learn. And anything else you want them to know has the date and time. And you have to invite people. So once the event's created, I can invite more people. And I set this event so that the people who are invited could also invite more people. Because I don't know all the Windermere real estate agents. But they probably, a lot of them, know each other. So I enabled them to invite more people as well. And you have an opportunity to generate interest beforehand by putting in comments, adding pictures, doing links, you know, giving more information, getting the conversation going. Then you can take this link and you can share it around. If you're doing a public one, you can share it around to your social media sites. So as an example, this is a public one. This is my TGIF Business Networking Hangout. And this is a show that I broadcast live over YouTube and Google Plus twice a month using this Hangout technology that we're learning about today. I create this event listing 
and I created this one on Monday, and then I started sharing it around to my socials and letting people know, hey, Friday I'm going to be doing this great show on this great topic with all these great guests. So it's a nice way to really give you an opportunity to promote your event, to build up an audience, and you can see we have people already commenting and talking about the show and that they want to come and they're looking forward to it. So that's really kind of nice. And we've got 19 people here who say they're going to watch, nine who are going to try, and a bunch who don't respond. And you can see the video is going to be right here. And it's really nifty. If somebody clicked on this play button now before it started, they would just get a countdown clock that says this event is going to start in, you know, 19 hours. So events are very, very handy. And now you've just learned about how handy the screen share is. If you want to do a slideshow presentation for somebody, you can open that slideshow presentation on your desktop, share your screen, choose the slideshow presentation, and that's what they will see. So it really enables you to teach both in person with yourself and your face and your talking and your smile, but also to create visual presentations for your audience. Okay, the next one down is called Capture. And I clicked on that and I would like you guys to click on that too if you don't mind having your picture taken in a screenshot. And what that does is you see a little camera icon on my thumbnail and what I see, because I've opened it, is at the bottom I see a little camera with a green circle around it. Now I am going to smile and take a picture. So smile. And there's the picture that it took. If you open your, if you click on capture and open it up, you'll see at the bottom right the photos that are being taken. And Barbara, now that you've opened up yours, I can actually click on you and put you in the main screen and take a picture. Now, it's just your profile icon because you have your camera turned off, but I'm going to do it anyway. So you can see. And Barbara, are you seeing those pictures showing up on the bottom and the side? Oh, she's muted. You're muted. So. Sure yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Randy, do you see those pictures on the bottom and the side or no? I don't, and I didn't see where I could get to the screen capture on the right. Okay. It's on the left-hand side. Oh, okay. It looks like a little blue camera. On my screen, it's underneath screen share, but you may not have it yet. You may be prompted to open it. Okay. And there, now you have it. So now you should be able to see. Now, here's the thing. I'll put you up there, Randy. Are you seeing yourself in the big screen? Uh, I'm not in the middle, no. Okay. I'm in the bottom right still. Okay. On those bottom thumbnails, go ahead and click on yourself, and that's what you'll see in the large screen. Okay. Okay. Now, Barbara took our picture, and it gave me a notice that Barbara took our picture. So, you give me a notice. <laughs> well, I, I know. It should be, the notice is that you see that people's cameras are turned on, which means they're going to take a picture. So basically it means keep smiling. <laughs> and why don't you go ahead and take a picture, Randy? Okay, so smile. And then click the button at the bottom. Yeah, there yep. you go. So your picture is going to be added to the pile. And on the right side, you see those pictures. Now, here's the thing. These pictures are only viewable privately between us inside the Hangout until we decide to go in and share them and make them public. You can only share and make public the ones that you took yourself. And Barbara wants to take another picture, so I'll turn that on. In the little thumb strips at the bottom, click on which one you want in the large screen, and then smile, and then take the picture. Okay, smile, Randy. Oh, nice one. Okay. okay. And then, Randy, you see a little bunch of thumbnails at the bottom on the right, and if you click on those, you see them a little bit bigger on the 
on the right side. Yeah. Okay. And so Barbara will be able to share that one of Randy. Now, why would you want to take photos? Any any guesses here? Sure. No? Okay. Well, part of it is because photos are what really attract people and add interest and grab interest. So in this hangout that we had today, as an example, if I were I'm going to create an event, or actually Let's do a real live example. Since I've already created an event for the Windermere real estate agents, how to do a tour of Google Hangouts, I can now, even though the event's over, we've already done it, after the fact, I'll go and I'll post these pictures to that event page listing. Social media marketing is very visual. People are visual. They like videos and they like pictures. So when you can make a post and add a picture to it, and especially if it's a a bunch of people smiling and having fun, you can use that as a post to market your business. So for example, Randy, you as the kind of head honcho at the Palm Desert Real Estate Office, you could say, you could post those pictures to your socials and then say, oh, we are doing a great job of bringing training into our real estate agents. Why work with Windermere? Well, here's a great example. We, we do training and it's fun. And you make a post and you include that picture and other real estate agents looking at that would go, gee, I wish my real estate company trained us how to use social media really well. And then they would be attracted to your posts. Okay. That's a really great idea. The next one I'm gonna talk about is Hangout Toolbox. And it looks like a toolbox. If you don't have it, I have turned it on. You should either have a prompt that says somebody's using Hangout Toolbox, and if you still don't see it, click on the three dots and see if you see it there, because then you'll open up more apps. Yeah. Okay, so when you open that box on the right and you click on the head in a circle, you're gonna see right underneath it, lower third, and then look to the right and you're gonna see a slider that says off. Remember mm -hmm. that slider. Now your name should be already populated in the first field. So in the second field, you can enter your website and forget the www, you don't need that anymore. Yes, where it says enter tagline. Or you might want to put your phone number or your job title and it kind of depends on what you're having to hang out for. So if you're in a work group, you work at a company and you're having a work group meeting, you might just put your title of what your position is. If you are doing a product demonstration and your goal is to get people to call you, you might put your phone number in it and then you can tell people to call you. If you want people to know about your website, you put your website there. If you have a logo, you can click on the choose logo and then it'll prompt you to choose a file from your computer. So you want to choose your file that's suitable for the web, not the print one because that's a large file. Oh, and in the, t in the tagline line, you either put your phone number or your website or your title because it doesn't give you a lot of letters. You can only do one. Then you can choose a color for the stripe. And when you've done those things, slide your slider to on. Now, if you don't have a logo, that's okay. What it will do is it will use your profile picture instead as the logo. And that's kind of nice too. Oh, Randy's got his up. I'm going to put him up here in the center. So Randy put Randy Weimer at windermeresocal.com and he put his email address. Now if you're doing a hangout and you want people to email you, that's what you put in. That's great. And so when you're doing a hangout on air, a hangout on air is broadcast live on YouTube and Google Plus and you get a YouTube link and you can Put that around on your socials. You can post it to Facebook or LinkedIn or wherever you want people to see it and they can watch. So when you have people watching, you want them to see your name and your contact info or, or your website info, whatever it is you want them to know about. So Barbara, after you put your information in, put that slider to on. It's the one in the lower third, not the custom overlay. And if it looks, oh, and Barbara's got hers on too, yay. So if it looks backwards to you, next to the slider, there's a little rectangle with a circular arrow. Click on that and it will look frontwards to you. 
Even when it looks backwards to you, the viewers are still seeing it the right way. And when you flip it, your, your whole screen's gonna be a little bit backwards. But that's okay, because you want your name and your information to be frontwards so that when you're taking pictures and screenshots to do promotion later on, they're getting the right information. And Barbara, everything that I'm seeing right now is a little bit blurry. So yeah. that's unfortunate. Uh, I'm not really sure why that is. Usually it stays blurry only for like a couple seconds and then it comes in nice and clear. And today it's not, I mean. And in fact, I'm a little bummed because my whole screen is a little blurry and it was actually fine until I showed you the enhance and focus and started messing with that stuff. And then it got a little bit blurry here. It's, you know, we, we as Hangout hosts, we just deal with these things as they happen and hope that by the end of the show that it, that it comes in. Usually what happens is it's at blurry when it first comes in and then it takes a minute to focus and then you can see it pretty well. But back and onward with the lesson, this Hangout Toolbox Lower Third is really one of the most handy items that you have because it does provide information when it works correctly. Okay. In the lower third box, you can save your presets. Once you have your lower third set up, at the bottom it says saved presets. You can type a name into that and save it. So, for example, Barbara, you have two different product lines that you represent. You can make two different preset lower thirds, one for each product line, and then save them. Next time you come into the Hangout, they are listed there in a list underneath where it says preset name and there's a little check mark and you can just click on the check mark to turn your different ones on and off. The next thing that I will show you is Google Drive. It is a triangle with a green side, a yellow side, and a blue side. And when I open it, then if you don't have it, it should kind of show up. Okay. So now let me see. I want to get, I had one open before. I'm going to, let's see. I want to, I'm going to make a new one, a new document. And this took me outside of my Hangout window, but I'm going to call this Hangout Document. And you'll see what's happening in the recording. It took me outside into Drive in a new window where I where the document opened and I'm changing the name so that when I go into Drive, I can find that document. Okay. So now I can add a document and uh, it says Hangout Document, and again, I'm, even if you don't see it, it's showing on my screen. It'll show in the recording so everybody can see. I'm clicking it. I'm clicking Select. And now it says Share Documents with Video Call Participants. Yes, I'm going to give access to everybody in this Hangout call. So now, when you click on your Drive icon, you should see it opens a little window that says Hangout, it has a Hangout folder, and underneath it will be a little blue icon that says Hangout document. And Barbara, yours should have two Hangout documents. Right. Right. Okay, so I see Barbara in there, and I'm going to say hi all. And Barbara, why don't you put your cursor in there and write hi all as well. Now I'm getting a little notice here and I want to give access. What happens when you click on the drive icon, Randy? It it opened up a window over the the middle. There's there's two doc it says hangout document, there's two of them. Click on hangout document and then put okay. your cursor in there. Enter a couple times so you're on a new line and write hi to us. So what you can see now is you can see all three of our cursors and we all have a different color, but this allows for real easy collaboration. 
So if I'm working on something with a team and we're all bringing a piece of something to the mix, then we can copy and paste what we were working on into one document so that we are all literally on the same page sharing the same notes. Now what ends up happening generally is that when you're in a work team, one person ends up typing the stuff in because if we're all three typing at the same time, that can get a little crazy. But usually with one person being the one typing things in, that allows somebody else to go back and, oh, there was an error in this part, or, oh, I want to add something to this part, and they can do that. And it's not too disruptive that way. But the wonderful thing is that at the end of your meeting, you have a set of notes that everybody has the same set of notes. Now above where it says Hangout, Hangout Notes, and Hangout Document, there's a red Add button. So if we wanted to add a new document, we would do here. And it shows My Drive, so it shows me stuff that I have in My Drive. And if you're looking at it on yours, you should probably see your drive. Shared with me, Upload, Previously Selected. And at the top, it's New, Create Shared Notes, which is grayed out because we've already done that. But there's also Create Shared Sketchpad. So now I created a shared sketch pad. You should see in the list Hangout Sketchpad. And if you wanted to, you could come into there and make some neat shapes and drawings. Sketchpad is just another handy app that you have inside Drive that allows you to do a lot of things. You can make handy callouts. So if you're making a flyer and you're just really having a hard time working with Microsoft Word and it's driving you crazy and you want to make a callout, you can just choose the shapes and make some callouts. Then you can create a text box over it and type in, here is my callout. So you can actually do flyer making on the fly if you pardon the pun, and collaborate with your friends. Hey, how does this look? Oh, how does this look? And you can kind of just do it and edit it while you're in a hangout together. And that saves a lot of time from somebody making a comp and then mailing it to the other members of the team and then getting their comments and they email it back and then you look at all the comments, you make the changes and you email it back. This way you're just all in a hangout together and you're making the comments and doing the changes right then and there. So these are just some handy tools. Now again, if you click on the drive icon, you'll turn that off and we'll see ourselves back in the video feed. So it's toggle to turn on, toggle to turn off. We are almost at the end, so I'm saving the fun things for last. And we got all the good business stuff out of the way, the chat box, the capture, the share screen. We learned about why you would want to take pictures and how you could use them in your promotions and create why creating an event is really good. So now we're just going to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to click on Google Effects. And Google Effects is just for fun. When you open Google Effects, it gives you some fun things that you can do, like put on a cat face or a dog face. Or a green mohawk. There you go, Randy, you're the king. <laughs> and uh, this would be also, as we're playing with these things, a, a good time if anybody wants to capture and take pictures to show that we were having fun in the hangout. And there's even some sound effects. So if somebody is on your show and they say something funny, you can add the laugh track. Oh, Randy, I gotta take a picture of that. Wait, let me put something on my head too. It's a nice way to then go out and say, hey, we had so much fun in our hangout today. We learned how to do fun stuff too, not just serious stuff. So I'm going to remove all effects because the next one I'm going to show you, which is our last item, is also a fun thing. And this is called Draw. And this allows you to draw on your screen. So you can draw things. Ta-da! Ta-da! I have ta-da lines. But I'm going to go ahead and erase that by clicking on the trash can. This actually has a very practical use too. And practical one would be text. And with the text box, you type in, let's see, 
I want it to be pink because I like my stuff to be pink. And you can make it attached to the person or you can make it just attached in a fixed space on the screen. At the top of the, the box that has your, your colors and stuff in it, there's a little square and then next to it there's a little head. So I chose the square and the last place I stamped my website it just stays stationary on the screen right there. So that's an example of, for example, if you wanted to put your phone number up there. Now if I click on the head, and I'll make it a different color this time, and I stamp it, it's attached to my head. So you can see I'm moving around. And look, this is Melani McDonald. She's got her name on her forehead. <laughs> so that decides whether it's it's on your forehead or stationary in the screen. So that is draw. I'm going to turn that off now. So unfortunately it's very blurry right now but uh, because we were messing around with so many of the different effects that came in. I will go ahead and tell you what mine says because we've reached pretty much the end of this lesson and, and now it's time for my commercial. So if you look at my lower third, even though it's blurry, it says Melani's Blooming Business Club, MelaniMcDonald.com. Tools and resources to help your small business bloom. Melani's Blooming Business Club is basically a membership club that I created so that my clients could have ongoing support from me. Once they join my club, they get access to workshops. I give a great workshop every month. Next month's workshop is on Wednesday, July 2nd from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. And we're going to learn how to create an event listing for your Hangout. So I will go back into my screen share and remind you of what that is that I'm talking about. Like this one, this is the event listing for the TGIF Business Networking Hangout. And if you remember, uh, I was saying that you create your event listing and then you can use that to promote your event. Events, share it around to your socials. Your video is right here. So in that workshop, we're going to learn how to create a future hangout on air event and listing and talk about ways of promoting it. But we're actually going to learn how to do that. So that's going to be a pretty good workshop. And members of my club get to attend it for free. It's part of their, well, it's not free. It's part of their monthly membership. The membership is monthly but it's month to month. People can cancel at any time if they just want to come in for one workshop. So I wanted something that was very affordable for small business people and I created the club. Randy, thank you Randy so much for inviting me to give this presentation for Windermere. Excellent. Thank you so much. It was a great session. Barbara, how did how did you like it? No, it was extremely informative and I uh, learned an awful lot. I don't know how much I will retain at this point but the nice thing is, as you say, is, is for your club, someone can keep going back and, and reviewing the, um, the hangout, so the recorded hangout. So that's really great. Okay, thanks very much for coming, and good day. And if you want to leave, you can go ahead and press that red telephone.